Hi everyone, Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Live, go live with Dr. Ankini Disease Volume 4. Okay, sebelum kita start, I would just like to invite everyone to share. I'm going to share my live video too. So share dulu. <laughs> Sekejap, macam mana nak share. Okay. So share. Ah, done. Done share. Alright. So, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And a very uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Nani Roslan. You are now tuning in live with a Medicare. It's Go Live with Dr. On Kidney Disease Volume 4. We did our Volume 3 two months ago. Uh, cepat je kan? Uh, also with Dr. Shazli. Uh, so, okay, we have viewers now. Before, kejap, before I introduce our speaker for today, I rasa siapa yang dah join us since volume 1 memang dah kenal lah siapa. <laughs> okay, first uh, I would like to uh, welcome all our viewers. Thank you so much for tuning in, tuning in to us and let us know where are you guys from? Where are you watching this live video from? Let us know down below. Comment lah if you're at work ke, tengah lunchtime, sambil-sambil dengar our live. Thank you so very much and let us know down below. Uh, which state are you from? Uh, where are you from? What are you doing? We want to know our viewers better because kita dah banyak buat live. Uh, uh, apa ni? Sebelum ni kita dah banyak buat live so we would like to know our viewers better. Ah, gitu. So share and also if you have any questions at all, please ask down below and nanti we will also uh, will be sharing our questions and also answers by doctors on uh, in the comment section so if you tune in later uh, you can scroll scroll uh, and read the answers given by doctor so you know you might want to ask other questions uh, follow-up questions lah kiranya uh, from the previous uh, questions that were being answered by the doctor all right uh, so please say hi to us please send love Please send uh, all the all the emojis that you can send us. I'm, I'm, I'm sending my love all there. Oh, hello. Uh, Erika Dem. Ah, betul ke? I sebut nama you. Dia kata, hi Dr. Shazli and Miss Nani. Hello. hello. Thank you so much for commenting. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> so we have uh, viewers dah. Alright. So, I would like to um, introduce our speaker for today. Uh, Dr. Muhammad Shazli. Uh, he's a head medical operations and training uh, for kidney division. Ha, dah berapa lama dah doktor dalam bidang kidney ni? <laughs> oh, dah, dah lebih lama dah. Dah lama dah. <laughs> Sorry, Gala, ha. how are you? Ha. Lebih dua tahun dah tu. More than oh, two okay. years but, ha. but sebelum ni pun ada pengalaman dekat hospital juga. Uh, so, right. hampir 15 tahun dah juga lah in the medical field lah. Otherwise. Right, right, ha. right. So, right now memang today doktor we are going to talk about kidney stones. Doctor, kidney stones dalam bahasa Melayu betul ke batu karang, Doctor? Betul. That's right. Ah, right. So, we will be talking about uh, kidney stones ataupun batu karang. So, if you think that this topic is interesting, please share this live video because we want uh, so many people to benefit from this. Because why? Uh, research shows that 1 in 10 people will Dapat batu karang or kidney stone in their lifetime. So, if you are right now currently in your office, if there's like 20 people, two of you in the room, ah, the possibility untuk kena batu karang or kidney stone. So, we would like to know lah today, uh, siapa yang akan kena kidney stone ni, uh, how, if, if there's a way for us to actually prevent this from happening, macam mana and what not. So, kita akan uh, semang-semang lah live dengan Dr. Shazli. Okay, Doctor. So, nampaknya kita dah ada viewers. Let's move on to our very first question. Doctor, what is kidney stone? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Assalamualaikum dan selamat petang. Uh, okay, thank you for having me again lah for volume 4. Ada volume 4 lah kita. Uh, so, topik kita ni banyak berkaitan dengan buah pinggang lah, eh, the kidney and then of course dia punya sistem sekali lah, sistem of the kidney which is your buah pinggang, dia punya saluran ke kita punya pudi kencing lah, eh, the ureter, bladder and then the uretra tu tempat kita kencing tu lah, eh, kat bawah tu okay. So, kidney stones uh, or the medical term we call urolithiasis ataupun dalam bahasa Melayunya batu karang lah. Okay, very common uh, in uh, countries yang climate dia panas. Ah. 
Okay, so the reason why there's a high incidence under the uh, Malaysians or South Asians ke, or even the Arabs ke, the blah 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 too, is because of the temperature yang tinggi, uh, the weather itself. Then so bila panas tu, uh, kita tend to uh, apa, have a lot of uh, concentration of the urine. I continue to be cut, and this can actually uh, lead to a formation of a stone. Ah, uh. batu karang ni ada banyak jenis. Okay, banyak jenis. And then uh, it depends on uh, orang-orang tu. And then unfortunately, the lelaki lebih mudah kena berbanding dengan perempuan. Oh, wow. Okay, so there's and there's not a, there's not an actual reason kenapa lelaki lebih banyak. Tapi I think that maybe maybe men ni uh, dari segi dong punya uh, apa working punya environment, they maybe they're more like into the construction ke or yeah, so they sweat a lot, so they lose a lot of water, but don't tak minum mencukupi, you know, <coughs> they would rather drink coffee or tea, not sure. okay, so that could be a reason why kenapa lelaki lebih banyak lah kan, but at this point of time, there's no actual evidence to say kenapa lah, okay right, right. and uh, batu karang ni pula dia, apa, symptom dia pun berbeza, berbeza compared, compared to uh, other diseases and then kita ada different different types lah, okay, so yang paling common yang kita selalu jumpa, ialah yang jenis daripada calcium Ah, uh, calcium oxalate. So, but people say, eh, calcium bagus tu kita kan, kan untuk our bones kan, for our joints and everything. Tetapi kalau katalah terlebih calcium ataupun ada penyakit yang mengelakkan kita daripada uh, absorb the calcium tu, dia akan dikumuhkan oleh buah pinggang. Dan kalau lah suasana buah pinggang tu uh, tak cukup air atau dia terlalu uh, acidic, these crystals daripada calcium ni akan bergabung dan mem- membentukkan uh, batu karang. Okay, but you also have your oxalate, you got your uric, uric stone, uric tu yang gout lah, yang dapat gout-gout tu kan? Hmm, uric. Hmm. Ah, so you got uric acid tu banyak dalam darah kita, so uric acid tu yang dibuang, ah, kat kini tu pun dia boleh membentuk uh, batu, ah, then you've got your cysteine, and then there's one more, it's called uh, sterovite atau magnesium punya batu. Okay, so there are many types. So we cannot say satu jenis saja. there are hmm. banyak-banyak jenis, banyak-banyak punca sekali. And then uh, dia memang akan menyebabkan simptom yang teramat lah sakit. Saya so, takutnya. Okay. And then imagine kalau katalah saluran kita tu halus je. Saluran tu mungkin saluran kita ni besar. Besar this uh, particular wire ni. Tapi kalau batu besar tu dah lalu, uh, it's going to be very painful lah. That's for sure. Okay. Right, right. Okay, so I believe kat Malaysia because of our weather, kita ada banyak kes-kes batu karang. And then terutama sekali ialah bila kita kurang minum air. Uh, so apa air kosong lah. So air tu does not include coffee or tea or Milo or ni eh, tea, ice cream, whatever is actually water. Because kalau kata kita minum coffee or tea, dia bertindak sebagai diuretic. Diuretic tu maksudnya dia nak keluarkan air. So mm-hmm. the more you drink coffee, the more you can change. So bila kita can change, dia tarik air keluar sekali and then kita jadi dehydrated. Oh nyah dehydrasi lah. Uh, and that can lead to uh, batu karang. Okay, so that's one thing that uh, I think kita perlu tahu yang uh, when you work in office and you are in an aircon condition, aircon tu menyebabkan the udara around you also very dry as well. Okay, so the dryness tu also make your body dry and you don't drink enough water even in the office pun boleh menyebabkan kepada uh, dehydration juga. Uh, so batu karang is something that we should be aware of and dia ada dia punya kesan sampingan dia, complications dia and even the worst uh, case scenario lah kalau katalah batu karang tu tak dirawat. Uh, so that we make uh, awareness lah to everyone uh, regarding batu karang. Okay, so speaking of awareness, lupa cik nak yeah. habak. <laughs> we are still in the month of March, 31st March hari ni, tomorrow is April already. So, uh, technically sempat lagi kita nak wish a happy World Kidney Day. Yes. To all of our patrons, our clients, our patients, uh, the uh, Medicare, uh, it's actually on the 10th, celebrated every 10th of March, uh, World Kidney Day. So yeah, as 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 you as you were saying, doctor, awareness mengenai ah ha, buah pinggang ni tak kisahlah penyakit dia ke kegunaan buah pinggang and whatnot tu memang sentiasa kita kena war war kan ah ha, gitu kita memang sentiasa kena kena always uh, constantly uh, top up kita punya ilmu ah ha, gitulah untuk kita selalu tahu and aware of the functions and also how to take care of our kidney lah ah ha, yes. so pada baru yang join kita ni ah ha, jangan lupa untuk share and also again 
Comment down below. Hi, ni ada Azros kata salam doctor and also Nani. Hi, Raiko salam. Uh, so again, we would like uh, all of you are participative je lah. Okay je to share with us down below uh, if you have any uh, experiences ke regarding uh, kidney diseases ke or you have any questions at all, please let us know down below. Okay doctor, um, ada orang tanya. Ha, ni soalan menarik ni. Ha, tapi sebelum kita ke soalan tu sebab apa, <laughs> doktor? Ha, kita ni kan dah nak uh, masuk ke bulan Ramadan. So I'm yes. sure there's so many questions regarding Ramadan. Because why doktor? Tadi kan doktor dah sebut kidney, uh, oh sorry, uh, batu karang ini ataupun kidney stones ni number one uh, pada baru yang masuk tu dia ada banyak jenis. And number two usually uh, happens uh, uh, dekat countries yang panas macam kita ni. Tapi betul lah doktor, I think banyak men My theory also lah. <laughs> Men ni kan, kalau kita tengok drama-drama pun orang lelaki ni dia suka minum kopi. Balik kerja, bang kopi bang, bang teh bang. Uh, itu je yang diorang minum. And they're not so rajin to actually drink plain water. Yes. So perhaps that's why it's more apparent uh, the kidney stones ni in men berbanding dengan perempuan. Tapi okey doktor, sebelum kita nak bacakan uh, satu soalan daripada kita punya viewers ni, betul ke doktor? Ha ni selalu semua orang cakap, tahanlah kencing. Ha nanti jadi batu karang. Ha selain daripada kurang air, selain daripada asyik kencing sebab minum kafein, betul ke tahan kencing boleh buat batu karang doktor? Okey. There is some truth to it. Ada ke, ada kebenaran dia. Uh, disebabkan bila kita tahan air kencing, okay, kita punya pundi kencing tu akan berkembang lah. Okay, and then dia akan berkembang to about maybe 40% of its original size. Eh. So dia kita boleh tahan lama juga. Boleh tahan lama juga. Uh, last time bila saya medical officer, saya boleh uh, apa buat surgery dengan my surgeon for almost 12 hours without kencing. So, wow. eh, betul. Lepas habis surgery tu memang kerja-kerja lah pergi toilet tu kan. But it's possible. Okay. But your the prevalence untuk mendapat buah, uh, apa batu karang tu, dia tak directly berkait dengan tahan, tahan kencing. Tapi tahan kencing ni boleh menggalakkan jakit kuman. Yeah. When you get uh, infection, uh, infection pada pundi kencing atau pusarai kencing tu, or even buat dengan yang tu, uh, jakitan tu yang boleh menyebabkan uh, batu. Uh, so the more you hold your urine, you mudah dapat jakitan. And jakitan tu yang akan menyebabkan apa uh, dapat batu karang. But just holding your urine alone sahaja, that one tu unlikely. Uh, right. So just so unlikely. So you sipat kencing, tapi you don't get infection uh, from the holding of urine tu unlikely to get batu karang. But because you hold your urine so often, then you dapat recurrent uh, infection of the urinary tract. Uh, yang tu yang boleh uh, lama kelamaan menghasilkan batu karang tu. So ada kaitan dia but not uh, directly lah otherwise. So right, yes, right, right. kalau perlu pergi please if you have to go, please go. Jangan tahan lama. So the other issue is we worry about when you dah bertua. So bila you suka hold your urine, kita punya bladder tu dah jadi longgar. Hmm. So kita masa muda dia very nice and tight dan bila kembang tu ada kencing dia boleh lepas. Tapi bila lah kita tahan, 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 tahan lama-lama dia punya muscle around it uh, becomes weakened and this is where kita dapat banyak kes yang kata incontinence maksudnya terbersih cium kencing hmm. itu mak orang mata uh, uh, kencing <laughs> okay, nah. so that is because when you were younger kita suka yeah. tahan kencing sangat uh, kita we will pay the consequences masa kita tua nanti so that's why we advise if you have to go you should go oh. uh, yes uh, tapi kalau tahan sekali-sekala tu it should be okay but it does not directly cause pertukaran but it can cause infection. Right. Okay. So, uh, we have a question uh, from our viewer, Umi Nazira. Puan Umi Nazira tanya, uh, kidney stone boleh jadi pada kids juga ke? Ha, which leads to the question, my question pun, can anyone get kidney stone including children, doctor? Unfortunately, yes. They can get kidney stone as early as uh, lima tahun. Lima oh, tahun pun dapat lah. juga ya, and then dekat pediatric punya ward, there's even a pediatric urologist, maksudnya pakar urologi apa punya kencing bladder yang kini untuk kanak-kanak, because they also get uh, apa jenis-jenis penyakit buah pinggang yang berbeza-beza termasuk uh, apa ni 
batu karang and we notice dia punya kalau bukan sebab penyakit lah because ada setengah budak-budak tu dia orang ada penyakit for example like we know tubular acidosis RTA that one tu is an infection uh, of the apa dia punya kidney dan fungsi dia berubah or budak-budak yang ada kidney failure pun ada juga or budak-budak yang kena jakitan kuman okay so these are medical causes uh, yang menyebabkan batu but ada juga setengah budak-budak tu is because they have a high intake of this sugary drinks uh, ayam bubula kan right? so coke lah, pepsi lah, sirap yang very pekat lah kan so when they drink a lot of sugary drinks eventually dia sugary drink ni dia macam coffee jugalah it's like a diuretic dia akan keluarkan air pada badan dia dia kerap kencing and then soon or later dia punya kepekatan yang kencing pun jadi pekat and they will form batu karang so yes budak-budak pun boleh kena juga Wow, that's scary. Tapi memang betul yes. lah kan. Kita kan suka bagi anak-anak minum cordial mm. drink for example kan. Yes. So actually that's really not good for children. That's right. So, so uh, oh, we, we should advocate our kids to start drinking water at an early age because air tu is very important for regulation of our kita punya buat badan lah. Metabolism kita, detoxify our body as well and then lepas tu untuk uh, mencairkan darah kita, air kencing kita semua lah. So it also controls your apa uh, hemostasis tu maksudnya keseimbangan badan kita lah dari segi dia, kita punya metabolism. And then furthermore, when you ask who else can get it, yes, adults can get it. The elderly pun boleh dapat juga. Uh, both males and females can dapat tapi like I mentioned before males can get it much easier than than females and then of course uh, one in ten lah uh, boleh dapat dapat tukar ni so that's why uh, dia takkan dia semua boleh kena uh, budak-budak sekali uh, kan? but then of course cases for children tu tak begitu banyak lah because now banyak uh, ibu bapa dia orang dah lebih sedar lah kepentingannya air untuk uh, kanak-kanak so they will only give a few sips of whatever coke ke whatever but they emphasize on water so nowadays kita jarang dah nampak banyak kes batu karang for budak-budak lah I see, I see, I see. Right. Oh I see, okay uh, apa tu? Tapi memang menarik jugalah sebab baru-baru ni pun speaking speaking of of, of kids kan sebab baru-baru ni pun uh, I think ada banyak sangat awareness pasal uh, garam or added sugar for babies below 2 years old. Kalau dulu yeah. uh, that awareness tu orang tak faham. Orang ingat macam kesiannya budak tu nak makan air, makan benda tawar, benda masin. Tapi actually ramai yang tak sedar sebenarnya sebab bat- apa kidney dia belum matang. Ah uh, betul, betul. betul. Baby yes. punya punya kidney tak cukup matang untuk proses the extra excess sugar and also salt. So perhaps right. uh, banyak parents parents yang muda-muda ni baru macam tahu oh. okay don't feed your children below tu sugar and salt. Yes. Bukannya kesi, jangan kesian lah budak tu tak cukup uh, flavor. It's just that the kidney tu sebenarnya. Uh, ni pun tak ramai orang yang macam oh sebab kidney ke rupanya. Uh, betul tak doktor? That's right. Actually last time when I was doing uh, pediatrics uh, for, for more than five years Memang kita advocate for newborns, uh, kalau boleh exclusive breastfeeding for at least 6 months. So 6 bulan tu exclusive breastfeeding because uh, buah pinggang dia masih tak matang lagi so dia boleh uh, not, not just dah buah pinggang, dia punya usus pun tak matang lagi so dia boleh mencernakan uh, breast milk. Lebih senang compared to cow's milk or kam, uh, susu kambing. Uh, then lepas tu after 6 months tu barulah kita advise to win dengan benda-benda yang lembut you know macam uh, bubur atau penestem semua uh, lepas tu after 1 year old tu we advise them okay lah benda dah ada gigi semua tu we can start going to solids lah otherwise hmm. but we always tell them uh, with regards to flavor kepada makanan tu budak-budak hanya develop flavor tu about 3 years old dekat hmm. 3 tahun tu keempat barulah dia orang dah dapat development of uh, taste buds then they can say eh ni sedap ni tak sedap hmm. Uh, tapi by six, one, from birth sampai 2-3 tahun tu, you sumpat lah apa-apa telan je because they, 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 they cannot, yeah. ha, they cannot yeah. differentiate sedap ke masin ke manis ke apa kan uh, so like you said, if you want to protect the kidney just give them the basic elements of uh, nutrition maksudnya all the carbohydrates, vegetables and all that tapi perisa-perisa tu mungkin tak perlu nak prioritize lagi waktu 2 tahun ke 1 year old because they, they don't taste anything uh, so bagi je kat itu, ada, you tahu lah budak-budak, bagi je surat telan Hmm, yeah. betul. Like, oh, this uh, this one taste you not know, very spicy. Kalau dia ada tiga empat tahun tu, then just start saying. Tidak tahu. Sedap, nugget sedap. Ah, uh, so that's where hmm. you. Right, right. 
Okay, so uh, doctor, uh, uh, before we we uh, we continue on, I would like to again uh, mengalu-alukan je to say hi everyone uh, who have just uh, joined uh, who have just joined us. Uh, thank you so much for watching us and let us know if you have any questions. And we have a question by our viewer. Uh, okay, ha, soalan ni pun menarik sangat sebab memang sebenarnya if you Google anything pun mesti ada macam-macam <coughs> tips dan petua untuk memecahkan batu karang itu. Ah, uh, so kita ada question juga uh, from me, Ling Li. What is the fastest way to dissolve a kidney stone? Oh, ha, huh, doctor. Okay, so uh, betul, there are medical ways to remove the stone, and there are non-medical ones lah. We call it alternative medicine, and then some suka panggil dia sebagai traditional medicine lah. Okay, so if we go towards the alternative one. Memang dia banyak petua lah tentang untuk memecahkan batu ataupun menghilangkan batu lah the main one is still water that's the main, main number one because badan kita boleh uh, dengan sendirinya bila uh, air kencing tu dah uh, cair kita boleh menghancurkan batu-batu yang kecil maksudnya yang less than 0.3 cm or less than 2 tu kita boleh buat sendiri but of course kalau tak boleh juga tu there are petua-petua yang menyatakan uh, certain uh, fluids ha, macam for example air barley That's one. Okay, air bali, air lobak, uh, lobak putih, and then prune juice. Uh, these are all the traditional uh, buah-buahan semua tu kan. These are known uh, to help to help to uh, pecahkan demi batu lah. But there's no scientific evidence to prove it. The way it works is actually dia uh, mengalkanize the urine. Uh, so apparently kalau senang dapat air kencing, bila air kencing terpekat uh, ataupun dapat uh, jaketan kuman, dia jadi lebih acidic. So bila dia lebih acidic, dia mudah membentukkan uh, uh, batu. So we have to counter the acid by providing alkaline uh, punya apa uh, chemicals which is in your apa your prune juice, in your air bali semua tu. So the alkaline tu what is processed, dia akan lawan it will balance out the ph of the urine so once the ph too is not much acidic uh, that's where there's a chance untuk pecahkan the batu secara semula jadilah uh, so dari segi ubat pula kita bagi satu ubat yang kita panggil urine alkanizer uh, macam ural semua tu uh, you drink it three or four times a day it helps to neutralize the acid in your urine and hopefully that way tu dia akan cuba pecahkan batu tu sendiri uh, tapi like i mentioned before these traditional methods ni Uh, is a lot of uh, apa uh, with the testimonials and then all this but there is no written uh, to prove it okay but right. so far it works so no harm prune juice mm-hmm. betul is no harm you can still try it okay so if something it helps something it doesn't but water is still the mainstay lah of uh, either prevention or even uh, apa nama ni uh, to re- to remove the small small stones is the big stones that we have problems with ones yang more than 1 cm yang 5 cm pun ada kan uh, these are the ones yang minum air bali ke whatever pun memang takkan keluar mana-mana lah tak eh lah tak sangat lah tu uh, right, so right. the ways you can try okay so we have another question uh, from uh, era sidem uh, what is the size of a kidney stone and also uh, while you're answering that question doctor maybe you can also answer the question Kidney stone ni memang only form in the kidney sahaja ke or other parts of the body juga? Okay, doctor. Good. Okay, technically the the kidney stone boleh form dekat mana-mana. Tapi majority of the time, dia form dekat kita punya uh, buah pinggang at the kidneys. Okay, sebab at the kidneys tu kita ada the nephrons and then the nephrons tu akan uh, keluarkan dia punya cair air kencing tu kepada one area called the pelvis lah uh, or the calyx of the kidney. That's where everything uh, keluar. Bila dia keluar dari situ, barulah dia masuk saluran, ureter, dan pergi ke bladder tu lah. Okay, but it can form anywhere. It can form at the kidneys pun boleh. Dia boleh form dekat puni kencing pun boleh. Oh, antara saluran tu pun boleh juga. But the kidney is a common one. Second common is the bladder. So, memang boleh uh, apa diwujudkan di mana-mana tempat lah. Okay, but, but the thing is we have uh, a lot of cases yang paling common memang dekat kidney to the point that batu tu boleh boleh membesar ikut bentuk buah pinggang tu. Ha, so that is a big stone. That one tu kalau dah membesar berbentuk buah pinggang tu, the buah pinggang tu no longer functions. Uh, that's the time where we need to literally remove uh, the buah pinggang tu lah. Uh, okay, so uh, what was the question again yang from the the reader tu? Uh, what is the size of a kidney ha. stone? 
it can vary okay paling kecil it can just be with, within like the two or three millimeters okay within a five millimeter punya radius tu the punya size tu sometimes it can be passed out through your the urine by itself it's painful but boleh kadang-kadang but anything above five millimeter dan approaching uh, 0.1 cm or two uh, dia susah nak lalu dekat saluran tu and they can get stuck along the way lah okay sama ada dia lekat dekat uh, apa junction lah masa dah jumpa dengan saluran tu lekat dalam saluran ke or lekat dekat the bladder tu tak boleh keluar dekat ureter tu so there are many places yang dia boleh get stuck lah basically alright but uh, some of them can grow very large up to 5 cm the largest I've heard that day was about close to 7 or 8 centimeters lah and then, and then the size of the bladder itself wow itu surgeon masuk kan dia potong the bladder nak keluarkan tu memang bentuk bentuk batu tu bentuk bladder wow <laughs> so that was how long this this, this patient simpan batu karang dia lah <clears throat> okay so the the size can vary so the one that we are concerned about is uh, what are the sizes and then different sizes to different treatment so kalau kecil saja again can pass on its own kalau besar sikit tapi can get stuck here and there kita mungkin tembak dengan uh, shock wave okay later I explain about that ataupun the third one tu kalau dah besar sangat tu we might have to go good use uh, apa macam uh, laparoscopy tu yang kamera dengan dia punya hmm. fiber optics jumpa batu tu we try to either remove it or pecahkan and then the fourth one is very big memang kena potong and remove lah okay so the sizes tu this is where we are concerned so we want to know what is the modality of treatment untuk uh, mengeluarkan atau memecah Right, right. Okay. So depending jugalah kan. Mungkin kalau tak go under the knife awal-awal mungkin boleh treat dulu pecah kasiri. Okay doctor, we have a very interesting question uh, from our viewer ni. Uh, Tian Kuat Ong, dia tanya. Ha. <coughs> Nervous saya nak baca soalan dia. Saya telah minum air kencing sendiri selama 25 tahun. <laughs> sebagai satu antigenic challenge dan memang mujarab untuk apa-apa jangkitan. Apakah pendapat doktor? Uh, can, I, can I repeat the question? Did, did she say drink her own urine? Yes, no, yes, 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 yes. This person okay. drinks uh, their own urine for the past 25 years. It is called an antigenic challenge. It's not only for kidney, Uh, it's also uh, apparently dia kata for 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 jangkitan lah apa-apa jangkitan <coughs> okay uh, there there are there are papers about this okay uh, unfortunately the masalah dengan minyak kencing change sendiri sebab kencing change tu mengandungi banyak toksin okay so bila kita melalui proses pekumuhan uh, so our body is extracting and uh, removing all the toxins from our body It's a lot of things. For example, it could be your urea out there, your uric acid, your creatinine, and then you've got byproducts of either medications and food. So, bila maksudnya bila air kencing tu keluar, dia ada mengandungi banyak uh, apa toxin kat situ. But there is a, 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 apa, a paper regarding of how they can recycle the air kencing. Maksudnya they filter it. So they will filter and remove whatever toxin is there, and then they extract the water from it and then that water can be drinkable but otherwise to advocate orang untuk minum air kecil sendiri as a method of uh, renal prevention so far there is no uh, benefit they have the research but the research said there's no benefit maksudnya daripada minum air kecil sendiri best to drink water lah so water is cleaner it's safer it has all the minerals that is required for our body whereas the urine contains a lot of toxins so there was a story once upon a time ago that uh, bear grills i have anyone watched yeah, that yeah yeah yes yes bear grills ni is a, a ex soldier yang dia buat TV show dekat discovery channel yang dia boleh yeah. di mana-mana tempat uh, kononnya lah nak ni so there's one episode tu dia ajar about if you are very desperate tak ada air langsung Clean your own urine, dia kata. But banyak doctors uh, rebuke because urine tu, where it has so much toxin, it also behaves like a diuretic, macam coffee and tea. So the more you drink your urine, the more you will pee as well. And then it will take out whatever water is left inside your body while you're stuck in the desert. And then lama-kelamaan, you'll die because you drink your own urine. Uh, not to mention that it can also lead to infection. 
So infection of the gut, you know, uh, infection of the intestines, you know. So this uh, the urine that we drink tu tak bersih. Ada banyak bacteria because when we keluarkan uh, kita punya toxin tu ada juga bacteria juga. Most likely if you had COVID, you might kencing pun keluar COVID juga. And then you go and drink it, you might get COVID again. So you never know. So right. there's a lot of bacteria that are also expelled from the kidneys into our urine. So drinking it memang memang tak digalakkan. Even at the point macam bad grills in situation sampai in the desert, yeah. they said no, that is a bad idea to do so. It'll make you even more dehydrated. So all lah macam uh, because dalam kita akan cikai ada sodium, potassium, garam semua ada kat dia. So all lah macam you are stuck on a raft in the middle of the ocean. You dah harga and you minum air laut. Air laut. Mm. You'll die. You'll die because of you minum air laut. Because the, the air laut too has so much salt, just like our urine as well. And then do so later the body cannot cope and they will just become dehydrated and then it will shut down all your organs. They shut down the kidney, shut down your liver, your heart and then last sekali, they shut down your brain which controls your heart and then the person dies. So, uh, I I would not agree lah with that method to do so. Okay, but if you filter it, maybe that's a different story. Yeah. Because if you, if you, all of you tak nak mengaku Because uh, when I went through my epidemiology with training Memang kita kena tengok bagaimana air dicuci Dan disalurkan balik pada sungai Yang diambil balik oleh kita punya syabas ke whatever And comes back to our house And kita minum balik air tu You, you guys do not know what to know where the water came from I know where it comes from Okay, so that is your Apa bila kita bayar every every three months tu? I don't know what in the water, in the water yeah. because, uh, yes, you should see how they clean everything. You will find all sorts of weird stuff uh, in the logi kat situ. And that thing from warna brown and chocolate, they go through all the process, it becomes clear water. Okay. To the point that the manager dekat situ dah bukti kat saya, tak elok, bersih tau. Dia minum lagi. Dia minum kat situ. Ah, you say that, it's that clean. It's I clean, can change yeah. dengan berak semua tu kan, dah jadi ajene. And then the ajene tu lah yang dilepaskan ke sungai, which I think right. dapat kutuk. Pasal sungai tu kotor balik Then hmm. uh, sungai uh-huh. tu kotor Then syabas pula kutik balik ke mana-mana Then they process it And they bore all the chlorine lah The apa fluoride lah whatever Then they salurkan ke our pipes uh, Then we of course lah boil ke masak ke whatever hmm. That's all. So filtering the urine is uh, acceptable right, Okay right. proper But thinking it straight away like that tu uh, I would not advise to do so Yeah, yeah. It has hmm. more apa orang kata lebih banyak mudah mudarat lah. Mudarat. Yeah. That's right. Uh, so we always we always have to find a balance, you know. So if the thing, for example, there might be some truth to it, because there's there's not much research yang kita pernah buat pasal yeah, dia. Yeah. Tapi kita perasan dia punya kebaikan dia mungkin banyak ni, keburukan dia mungkin banyak ni. Right, right. Okay. So we rather see uh, kebaikan tu banyak ni, so buruk pun banyak daripada baik tu. So it always the kebaikan, you know. But then water has a lot of kebaikan. Uh, yeah. So that's how we decide what is uh, which which to, which method lah what yes. what what to drink lah yes that's right <laughs> okay wow so <laughs> well I mean yeah that that's how they they apa uh, dia punya life choices lah kan yes, but yes. yeah if you ask a doctor of course ada uh, doctor will say no better drink water lah sir yes. okay <laughs> so there's another question speaking about water kan just now doctor this uh, explain you know how you see all this penapisan and what not you know where we we get our water from so uh, this raises a question by a viewer dia kata what about sparkling water ah ha, jenis jenis air lah pula ni kan mutawas <laughs> eh apa jenis jenis air ah <laughs> uh, yeah so sparkling water Is that as good as drinking water or mineral water for good management of kidney health? Ah, jenis jenis air pula, doktor. Okay, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, water ni basically ada dua main main types lah. Satu tu is called hot water, and then the other one is called soft water. Okay, so hot water tu is when it's gone through all the chemicals that we've added. Dah tambah pada air itu, and then to tambahkan mineral lah, fluoride lah, all the things lah. And then we sometimes kita nak bagi the soft, kita akan uh, campur dengan garam sikit. Then garam tu akan attract things like calcium and fluoride semua tu. And then it basically removes all the the hard particles of the chemicals away from the water. It becomes soft. Okay. So uh, these two waters, otherwise, memang is in our piping system. Okay, but then they go to other processes to add on or remove certain things lah. So for example, there are such things as RO water, reverse osmosis. Mm-hmm. So when you go to reverse osmosis, that the one we use here in dialysis, they keluarkan semua benda. So technically, 
air yang digunakan untuk dialisis adalah air sahaja yang tak ada kandungan apa-apa uh, kalsium ke magnesium ke apa tak ada it's just plain water is called RO and then there's no minerals so if you uh, as a human being which require minerals and then you minum air kosong yang tak ada apa-apa mineral your body tak akan dapat benefit daripada all the minerals yang required so that's why we don't advocate to minum air RO boleh minum it will quench your thirst kalau dahaga boleh minum tapi memang tak ada apa kandungan mineral dalam dia right. okay then you've got your uh, drinking water actually drinking water itu is tap water hmm. when you buy air mineral tu dia drinking water tu is just tap water then tap water tu dia akan jadi diproses oleh sabas Okay, so now you know lah where it comes from. Okay, there you've got your mineral water. Then mineral water ni pula ni, dah zaman dulu, is supposed to come from the mountains. Uh, from the bukit-bukit in the mountain. And that's where they salur kat sungai tu. And then when the air tu lalu kat sungai tu, it'll collect all types of minerals from the batu-batu tu. Then dalam tu ada campuran lah macam-macam uh, salts and minerals that is good for our body. Okay, so that's where the mineral water punya concept came from. But nowadays, we are able to uh, inject the minerals according yeah. to what we want lah masa kita nak berapa gram lebih kita boleh bancuh siap-siap lagi situ dah that's the modern way lah zaman dulu yes pergi ke kena lah lalu batu-batu peti ha, ayat tentu okay ha, minum, balik ha, ha, but now it's all process is all modern lah okay sparkling water pula is actually water yang they really uh, apa purify the water but they also add on um, minerals yang required by the body inside it lah okay that's why you can you can taste a bit different as well from from air lain eh? dia rasa macam milky a bit macam air zam-zam sedikit you know so they might add in a bit of chemicals and uh, minerals to make it more alkaline okay but usually the requirements of the minerals too depends on the person maksudnya orang tu kalau active lifestyle they will lose their minerals from their sweat so if every day they buat marathon ke kerja buruh ke apa kan best to drink water yang ada minerals so it replaces whatever minerals yang they lose through the sweat okay but if they sit in the office saja tak kerja apa-apa sangat pun uh, we still need the minerals but may not be as much as those yang kerja di luar lah di, di buruh semua tu tapi from sparkling water to mineral water those two basically there's no much difference in a way whether it benefits the body or not because if you have too much minerals pun the the body will say okay that's enough we have too much we'll just keluarkan dah right, I can change so it's like an overkill you take a lot of minerals minum 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 dia keluar juga bagi kita cukup lah, banyak, kita nak banyak ni je, you bagi banyak ni untuk apa so banyak tu dia buang je lah, dia buang lah like kencing so uh, just drink the requirement amounts uh, when you have the required amounts too, is good enough to protect the kidney to protect the urine as well okay so but uh, it's true enough there are many types of water but the the best one yang yang, yang jangan minum tu kalau boleh is the RO uh, hmm. RO water, now they got this uh, high alkaline water I think they're selling a lot of alkaline water yeah. nowadays. Okay, so apa kangen kangen, kangen 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 uh, ah, yeah, all yeah. that right. Okay, so far again, this will enter the alternative or traditional med- uh, medication punya supplements because still there are no actual uh, evidence to say that alkaline water is good for us. There's no evidence yet to say so, but there are a lot of testimonials. I drink kangen ni, oh, saya sihat lah, saya aktif kan. But it could be a psychological effect as well. It could be a placebo effect. So we don't know yet. Okay, but uh, the best for me is just to drink your normal plain water, uh, not the RO water, you know, yang ada minerals. That would be the best. Right, <coughs> right. Okay. So tak kisahlah sparkling ke, apa ke, but as long as it's not RO. And yes. uh, yeah, uh, apa tu, it's interesting that you mentioned about testimonials because I I think that there's so many people, uh, it's, it's sort of like a misconception. They don't really understand there's a fine line. Not fine line, yeah. Actually, there's a huge line <laughs> to differentiate between Uh, research and also testimonials. It's yes. always like it works. There's so many testimonials. <laughs> like usually, if supplements and also you know uh, alternative options. But sometimes, yeah, if you believe in testimonials, then it's 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 up to you. But then, yeah. uh, you know, research, research papers, and so research is is a way different method from yes. testimonials. So yeah. you know, maybe you think it works because of the testimonials. But again, if you ask a doctor, of course, a doctor we might can based on scientific facts and also yes. research lah. Yes. Uh, okay, uh, so Dr. Actually ada banyak questions kat sini but we will also want to know hmm, sekejap kita nak, kita nak link kan dua dalam satu terus kita nak doktor jawab. 
uh, number one, ada orang tanya, how long it takes for the kidney stone to pass out? And also, there's also a question, once you have one stone, are you more likely to have another? Ah, okay, Dr. Okay, good question. Uh, regarding to how long it can flow out, that, that also depends on the size. So, besar mana batu karang tu will dictate uh, how soon or how fast you can expel the batu tu lah. Okay, the thing is, uh, kita create urine tu, we have 0.1 mil, uh, about 1 mil per hour. So, every one hour, our body produces 1 mil of urine. Okay, so that's why how we monitor a patient tu, we always say if the patient tu tak cukup air, they produce less than 1 mil per hour, cukup air more than 1 mil. Tapi 1 mil tu actually minimum. So it's a range of 1 or up to 5 mils per hour. You know? So uh, it depends on how how your lifestyle is lah. So kalau batu tu besar, it will take a long time for it to travel. Let's say punca dia daripada bawah pinggang, uh, dia akan ambil masa untuk turun daripada ureter, then go down to the bladder, lepas tu keluar daripada urethra tu lah kat bawah tu. So the exact time tu we cannot say because it depends on the sizes. Okay. Uh, so the smaller the size, mungkin lagi cepat. So let's say it's very small, 0. Uh, let's say one millimeter only the size here. Yeah? Uh, kalau you produce one mil per hour of urine within one, two or three hours, most likely you might expel the stones. Sometimes you can even feel it, sometimes you can even see it, nampak macam uh, sebuk-sebuk keluar tu, that is the batu yang mungkin dah pecah what is on the way out lah. Okay. And then, uh, unfortunately, okay, this is unfortunate story that if orang tu boleh dah kena batu karang, they can even get multiple batu karang. So not just one, they can get up to two or three batu karang. So satu belah kanan, dua belah kiri, satu kat bladder, yes, they can get it. And the sad thing is, it is uh, family history positive. So kalau mak ayah you uh, muda kena, anak dia pun muda kena juga. There is a genetic link to say that uh, dia boleh uh, turun dalam keluarga hmm. tu. So that's why orang yang ada family history of batu karang has a higher chance of getting, getting batu karang. Right, yes. right. Yeah. Okay, are, are there actually symptoms? How do we know that we actually have batu? You know, as we speak, now it's bila lah kan? There's actually like batu, <laughs> stones building yes. up somewhere in my body. How do I know it, number one? So what are, are, are the symptoms? And how dangerous uh, are these kidney stones if not being treated? Uh, yeah. The first, the earliest signs that most people ignore is actually uh, lawyer dan muntah-muntah, nausea and vomiting. Unexplainable, nausea and vomiting. Maksudnya kalau orang tu perempuan, she's not pregnant, it's not food poisoning, you know, it's not uh, motion sickness ke apa kan. So, it's an unexplainable nausea. Kita check dulu tak tahu dari mana datang nausea and vomiting. And then we have to think, oh, it could be an early sign of a uh, kidney stone stuck somewhere lah. Uh, the other the other common one is of course the classical pain very sharp pain okay and then it's very tajam and then dia macam uh, you can pinpoint it you know, and then it's usually at the back kat belakang uh, then it goes down dekat loin area loin tu kita punya pinggang ni and then dia akan pindah ke depan dari belakang tu dia pindah ke depan sebab itu saluran air kencing kita yang ureter tu uh, dia akan pindah ke depan ke tem tempat kita punya puli kencing tu. So kat depan lah, kat bawah di biasa juga. So if the pain is stuck at the back tu, you will feel it at the back area. area. But if it travels down tu, you can actually feel the batu tu duk bergerak. So you will say, I, I, my pain ni, dia macam bergerak lah. You can see ni, you cannot oh, issue wow. now. Very sharp, you know. Uh, then kalau kita dengar tu, the first thing we say, eh ni bukan sikit tu, ni batu ni, dia boleh gerak kan. Oh, then, and then belah kanan saja, belah kiri okay. Uh, belakangan saja. So you know that okay, that is suspicious of a stone lah. Okay, so sometimes the stone too causes blockages and then the blockages too cause uh, apa, urinary retention. I can cik tu bertakung and kuman tu datang. So when they get infection, they can come with uh, fever lah. Uh, UTI lah, they get fever. And then batu tu pula bila dia lalu dekat seluruh dia tu, sama ada dekat uh, buah pinggang ataupun seluruh ureter, dia meng, dia, dia calar lah, dia calar seluruh tu. Hmm. And then even ada ureter tu, keluarlah darah. No, so, dia cakar kan, on the way batu tu on the way dia cakar lah, dia cakar cakar tu keluar darah. So, eye kencing tu pun boleh darah. brown colour, uh, it can be foul smelling or that. So, you get hematuria lah or blood in the urine. You know, so it's caused by the stone as well. Okay, then uh, you get your fever from infection. Uh, then, the uh, common tu is the nausea and vomiting lah. Uh, so, uh, but a lot of uh, patients tu, dia orang tak pasti what is it. What is this sort of pain? Is it muscle pain? 
No, you could uh, terlihat ke, okay, is it sakit perut ke, ke, ke depan pula ni, you think sakit perut ke, then sakit perut tu pun ada nausea and vomiting. So, you might think, oh, food poisoning. Hmm. So, okay. where the doctors have to, apa, uh, apa, analyze, get the history proper, examine the patient, maksudnya dia kena tekan semua, and then sometimes we do something called renal punch as well, to to try to elicit the pain, and then to confirm it, 100% tu, we have to send for imaging studies. Hmm. Imaging tu macam X-ray uh, ataupun ultrasound, and then the something called uh, intra uh, apa IVU, uh, apa intra intravenous uh, urethrogram, and the bumbu cedak awat tu, and then CT scan. And then from there baru lah we can confirm uh, kewujudan batu tu. That's number one. Dekat mana batu tu? Number two, and how big is the batu? Uh, then from there we can proceed with treatment. Otherwise, uh, but again the classic punya symptom is pain, pain dekat belakang and dia mungkin pindah ke depan. Very sharp pain. Right, right. So what would happen? What's the worst case scenario that would happen if people hmm. just ignore the pain yeah. or takut? Selalu je yes. kan orang kata batu karang ni orang tua selalu dapat. Yeah. Usually lah kan? Yes, uh, right. And they were always like, ah bila kencing dia sakit apa tapi bawa tak tahu je. Tapi yeah. apa sebenarnya the worst thing that could happen if it's left untreated doctor? So if let's say batu karang tu uh, is left untreated, it can grow in size. That's number one that we worry about. They boleh membesar, they membesar, membesar. So if it membesar in the in the kidney area, yeah, the ruang situ, uh, that one too might not cause so much symptom until much much later lah. But we worry is when dia turun, lepas tu dia dekat pulak somewhere dekat saluran tu, then dia membesar dekat saluran tu, then it can block the movement of urine. So when they block movement of urine, urine tu akan patah balik. So bila dia patah balik, dia number one, it can cause infection that I mentioned. The second thing, dia boleh membengkakkan kita punya uh, buah pinggang. So it swells up, we call it hydronephrosis. Uh, then fungsi buah pinggang tu terjejas. Okay, so the early signs tu, it can cause acute renal failure. Uh, which I mentioned before in the past punya volume. So acute tu maksudnya kalau dia rawat cepat, the kidney can heal back to normal lah. Hmm. Kalau dia biar bengkak lama sebab dia sumbat, air kencing tak lalu, dia sumbat sebab dia because kini ni duduk keluarkan air kencing lagi, okay? Mm. So, it won't pop, it won't burst, that's for sure, but it will go very, very, very big and then eventually the nephron that I mentioned before tu dipenyek kan, dia dah penyek the nephron tu, uh, fungsi buah pegang tu dah hilang. So, you get your stage 4, stage 5 kidney disease which eventually you can buat dialysis. Ayuh. Uh-huh. So if you just one kidney tak apa, so one kidney tu dah bengkak, so dari mungkin the other kidney tu hidup lagi. So you might remove this kidney, uh, then you still have one kidney uh, available. But if both kidneys are gone, uh, either from yang ni batu karang, yang ni jakitan kuman, or kecil manis dah tinggi, then dua-dua dah gone, dialysis. Uh, so that's the worst case scenario lah. So right, right. you block the movement of urine. And it can swell up the ureter, uh, we call it hydro ureter, and it can swell up the upper bopinggang, hydronephrosis, uh, which eventually will impair the function of the kidney. So, lagi cepat kita buang batu tu, then saluran air kecil tu boleh lalu balik, then bengkak ni akan surut balik. Surut lah. Right, right. Uh, okay. Uh, and infection. Infection is also one thing because uh, UTI is quite common, kan? You, people get and then they yeah. But when it's blocked there, and then the urine is accumulated there, I, kuman tu boleh merebak, and then to the point that bukan saja dia confined kepada buah pinggang dengan saluran air kencing saja, dia boleh keluar daripada sistem air kencing tu dan masuk kita punya body itself. So we call that septicemia. So the bacteria enters our blood system and the bacteria tu bermahaja lela all wow. over. Tapi punca je daripada buah pinggang tu. Macam apa? Septic tank bocor lah. Yeah, that's right. 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 Uh, these are the common ones, lah. Right? Okay, okay. So we have uh, a lot more of, of questions, but I will read uh, all of your questions. Don't worry, viewers. <laughs> I will read all of your questions. Uh, tapi before that, uh, we would like to know because ramai yang tanya, uh, are, ki- are are stress uh, one of the factors uh, can get kidney stone? So kita nak tanya as a whole lah, apa sebenarnya uh, sebab sebab terjadinya kidney stones? What are the causes of kidney stones, doctor? Mm-hmm. And also, we will also want to ask about. Uh, minum air lah ha, sebab dah nak bulan puasa ni so sebenarnya and also the myth surrounding that you know if you are uh, apa, berapa, berapa liter air uh, for every 25 kilogram of your weight ah uh, tu pun kita nak tanya jugalah tapi first doctor what are the causes of kidney stones 
Okay. Tapi uh, tadi you dah sebut genetik yeah. kan, Doktor? Okay, lagi? Yes. It's, it's a family history, it's number uh-huh. one. But the most common uh, for for kidney stone ni, kebanyakan ni ialah uh, tak cukup air kosong lah, air ya. Uh-huh. Uh, not enough hydration, and then especially like I mentioned in a hot country like ours, bila kita uh-huh. banyak peluh pun tu kan, and we don't drink enough water, uh, yang tu akan jadi uh, the main cause of uh, kidney stones, okay? Okay, other causes can be even due to ubat. Uh, ubat-ubat macam anti-migraine medication or anti, uh, apa, anti-sawan apa medication. Side effect dia juga boleh menyebabkan kewujudan uh, certain type of stones juga. Okay. Ataupun uh, terlebih makan certain type of minerals lah. So, since calcium stones are common, mungkin too much of calcium intake. Mm. Uh, keju tu you makan sampai 20 sehari ke apa. So, you've got too much uh, calcium in your body. Calcium pun tak elok juga. Uh, that's right. Too much protein pun tak bagus juga. You take in moderation. So, bila dah makan terlebih banyak kalsium tu, uh, your kidneys have to work hard to keluarkan yang uh, excess of kalsium yang lebih tu. But of course, when it does so, kewujudan kalsium lain kencing tu yang boleh menyebabkan penghasilan kalsium oxalate punya stones. Okay, then there are other diseases macam uh, something we call celiac disease lah, di mana usus tu tak boleh nak serap <coughs> certain types of minerals. They cannot serap magnesium ke, dia tak serap uh, calcium ke, so all keluar pada kita punya buah pinggang juga and so it's all dikumur di situ or operations, certain type of operations as well, you know? so any gut operation pun has a risk of uh, developing uh, stones because again it goes back to the, form, the fact that dia tak boleh nak absorb, so after the operation tu macam gastric bypass ke or any oh, medication of ni kan, the gut tu doesn't work like it used to uh, until a few months later So, bila dia nak adjust daripada operation tu, dia tak boleh nak serap this mineral. So, this minerals pun dikumpulkan di bawah pinggang. So, the more these minerals ni berkumpul di bawah pinggang, lebih mudah dia nak uh, menghasilkan uh, batu karang itu. Okay, so, uh, but the mainstay of majority or maybe more than 70% of patients yang mendapat batu karang ni is all related to uh, inadequate fluids lah. So, basically, uh, minum air banyak tapi air tu bukan air kosong. It's actually like it's like coffee They drink coffee in the morning, dahaga pun minum coffee uh, Lepas exercise pun, tengok ice limau, next cafe ke kan So, they say yes, I drink 200 oh. liters of fluid But it's all uh, this, uh, the sugary drinks, it's all caffeinated drinks So, uh, it doesn't cause a uh, proper dilution of the urine uh, So Stress, uh, stress, doctor? Sorry? Uh, stress, stress boleh ke? Stress may not be uh, directly, directly uh, connected to it Uh, tapi so far there, there is no evidence to say that stress or emotional punya apa uh, levels tu can influence uh, formation of stone but if that affects the person punya uh, drinking habits then yes so if they stress mm. and then they like to smoke to distress they like to drink coffee or express when they distress tu then those uh, actions okay. that they do in response to dia punya stress tu uh, those things can affect uh, our apa urine punya concentration lah otherwise Yeah, but these are the common ones lah yang kita, kita nampak. There are much more complex ones as well lah. You know, like I mentioned before, with renal tubular acidosis, ah, that's the metabolism of the kidney. You've got your apa, renal cysts, ah, kalau ada ketumbuhan dalam buah pinggang tu pun boleh menyebabkan juga uh, stone formation. Uh, even cancers, you know, certain type of kidney cancers pun uh, can lead boleh to stone. Boleh sebabkan stones. Yeah, okay. but the things that you have to uh, investigate to find out. Uh, so, right. It's hard to tell people, uh, don't get cancer, uh, so it's hard to advise <laughs> drink a lot of water, uh, then you can prevent the stones from happening there. Uh. So best to know uh, water like, is the essence. Right, to right. To so it. hence, perhaps you can say that the the, the precautions, uh, actually, number one is always to get enough fluids, enough water. Lah. So <laughs> this boils down to the question uh, of yang tu lah, yang betul ke, like every 25 kilogram of your weight, You have to drink one liter and also, doctor, how do we ensure like bulan puasa ni nanti <coughs> ah, kita cukup that requirement of Yelah, banyak ada tiga liter lah siap ada botol ayak ni ha yeah. Jadi, yeah. Every hour kena ni ni, okay So, doctor, berapa sebenarnya air yang kita perlukan, doctor? We we don't really go according to apa dietitian mungkin lah maybe for doctors mungkin tak in detail but you know we don't usually calculate within the the gram lah because kalau tidak nanti kan uh, the thing is very uh, apa, rigid we always say like, for ladies we advise between about two two to three liters in a day And for men maybe about three to four liters but it also depends on your daily lifestyle lah 
but uh, two liters per day is good enough. Twenty-four hours. Okay, so mm. two liters. Uh, so uh, one liter to pun we will say is just cukup makan saja. Uh, so we prefer to go up to two liters otherwise. So according to weight too, I usually don't practice that because kalau tidak everybody will be measuring themselves. So lepas tu they'll be calculating blah 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 blah. Then they'll say okay, I need to drink three point two five six liters. Uh, then they'll start measuring and everything. You know? So just keep it very easy to remember lah. Ladies about two liters, maybe men about two liters required. Right. With regards to bulan puasa, that's why the beauty of bulan puasa is they need us to sahur. Hmm. They must sahur. Even buat sahur tu pun kita dapat pahala. Siapa yang skip sahur tu kurang sikit. <laughs> Betul? Itu kebaikan dia because it's considered as a very early breakfast for us to prepare day of fasting lah for the next uh, apa, uh, eight hours or nine hours too. So masa waktu sahur tu lah yang kita kena make sure we have enough carbohydrates enough protein, uh, adequate amount of uh, sugars and enough water. So please don't drink coffee during sahur or coke or whatever. Water is still the best. But that water will uh, re- will protect your kidneys for the whole eight hours, okay? But of course, kita sebagai orang Islam tu, we don't puasa dengan tiba-tiba. Because basically kita puasa ni uh, in in process. When we were small, sampai membesar tu, it was process. So if you were to ask, um, For example, orang yang convert to the Islam and tiba-tiba ask him, okay, you got to do a fourth puasa now. He might develop kidney stones. He or she might right. be tak biasa lagi. Because we have been doing it for the adult life. We've been doing it every yes. year. Betul. Every body and our kidneys pun dah faham dah. Okay, nak puasa. Step up, make sure kita simpan air sikit, minum banyak. We make sure the urine too is the, apa, the diluted proper. We won't form stones. Okay, and then make sure sahur. But then for someone yang tak pernah puasa and tiba-tiba you are to puasa one month uh, without water, they might develop. So that's why we always say, oh, budak-budak, uh, dah kecil-kecil ni puasa setengah hari. Okay, yeah, remember kan? Yeah, yeah. Dah setengah hari bagus, puasa, bagilah reward sikit lah, coklat-coklat kan. Lepas tu, dah besar sikit tu, okay, kita puasa sampai petang pula. Balik sekolah boleh makan, you know. So that training process, bila, bila kecil sampai besar, is also training our body to sooner or later adapt to the fasting right. period. Right. Okay. Okay, so once it's the adult, our body the uh, academic, dah tahu dah lah. Mm-hmm. Then the body knows how to to apa, balance itself but it still requires the right nutrients to support. So that's why kalau boleh jangan skip sahur and uh, sahur pun ada juga tu tak nak makan. I know certain, I think my father dulu tak nak makan. Oh, tak nak mm-hmm. makan. Air dia minum. Mm-hmm. One glass of water Ha, lepas tu dia buatlah dia punya semayang apa, tahajud dia buat apa, apa tidur. Ha, so, mm-hmm. nak makan lah pun, dah diet lah kononnya time bulan puasa ni kan, nak kurus kan. Bangun sahur, minum okay. air. Ha, air kosong, oh. minum air kosong, minum, right. okay, kita but of course it's best to eat lah to to help you. Yeah. But again, even I, I think one of the sudah pun kata kalau tak makan pun water is still the essential Betul. for sahur. Minum air, then you can go back to sleep ke whatever lah. Ha, that's right. essential. Uh, so right, hopefully right. one can can uh, apa uh, bangun untuk sahur lah <laughs> Increase okay. myself lah <laughs> <laughs> Betul, kena rajin bangun sahur uh. Okay, so uh, kita ada satu lagi soalan kita nak uh, baca satu soalan Before we actually wrap the whole session uh, From uh, Puan Maria S. Kada Dia kata, Doktor, saya, ayah saya ada kidney stone Tapi dalam proses jumpa pakar dua bulan lagi uh, Kita faham lah kan, kadang-kadang some hospitals kan lama nak tunggu kan <laughs> Yes. So dia kata boleh tak kalau makanan seafood contohnya boleh terukkan lagi keadaan. Ha. So what actually are the diets to ensure that the kidney stone doesn't maybe lagi teruk ke lagi banyak ke. Tapi itulah tadi doktor dah mention pasal uric acid pun boleh yeah. jadi batu kan. Okay. So right. macam mana doktor? So biasanya uh, kalau ada batu karang tu kita kalau boleh tak galakkan makan banyak benda yang ada banyak purin. Uh, purin tu yang akan uh, menghasilkan uric acid. And purine ni mostly comes from protein and protein ni banyak datang daripada seafood, uh, daripada daging atau ayam lah. And then to add further problems, seafood ni banyak ada sh- uh, shell, shellfish. So shellfish kan udang punya kulit ke apa ketau tu, all that contains calcium. <coughs> so walaupun kita tak makan kulit tu, but then when you masak the kulit tu dissolve and certain the calcium pun enters into your food, pun you dapat calcium ke intake pula that is lebih daripada apa yang diperlukan and these two uric acid dengan calcium boleh uh, bertepek kat batu tu membuatkan dia lebih membesar 
you know so that's why we advise kita perlukan uh, apa a proper diet that high in vegetables high in buah-buahan uh, low in salt uh, but salt kita ada sodium punya yeah. tu and apa uh, potassium di batu low in purine which is protein and uh, moderate amount of uh, calcium intake <coughs> okay but uh, the problem is bila kita tunggu lama takut dia menge- dia kecil mula-mula tapi after waiting tu dia jadi membesar so rawatan dia pula akan jadi berbeza <coughs> so uh, advisable seafood tu kena kurangkan kalau boleh Hmm, okay, so uh, that will I hope that will answer uh, ni lah viewer kita punya question. Okay, doktor, sedar tak sedar? <gasps> dah sejam. Kita <coughs> baca, sebenarnya there's so many other questions that uh, I tak tak sempat nak tanya. But uh, for all the, the viewers uh, who have been with us since pukul satu tadi, thank you so very much. And if you want more information uh, about uh, about us about Medicare, you can visit www.maedicare.org medicare.org uh, if you want to know what are the services that we are offering where are we located uh, what are the things that you can come uh, what are the things that you can actually get uh, nila from us our services uh, please visit our website and then thank yeah. you so very much for sharing this live session thank you so very much uh, dr muhammad shazli uh, is actually the head medical operations and also training at uh, medicare so thank you so much dr banyak yang kita dah rangkumkan hari ni pasal yeah. kidney stone pasal batu karang and uh, on behalf of medicare we would like to wish uh, ramadan mubarak uh, next week kita dah ramadan dah Uh, so, suka saya nak share tadi ada memang ada orang tanya lah apa tips untuk make sure air tu uh, ada satu je tips je, tiba moderator yang bagi tips kan <laughs> If you don't mind doktor no Tapi actually sebab memang benda tu yelah like doktor say actually two liters kan Kadang-kadang kita ni uh, jadi macam takut tak eh cukup ke ni nak puasa ni But because actually 250 uh, is actually satu cup kan betul tak? Satu cup is 250 ml so betul lah orang kata 8 glasses, 68 glasses a day So yeah. what we can do is actually setiap kali sebelum you buat something contohnya bubuh ke apa semua mesti you mulakan dengan one cup of water and akhiri dengan one cup of water. Confirm settle dah 8 gelas sehari walaupun bulan puasa. Yeah, that's good. That's a good tip. Ha, buka, Excellent. Ah uh, berbuka mata nak sahur satu gelas. Satu gelas kecil je tak seksa pun. Yes. Uh, nak sahur satu gelas, habis sahur satu gelas because sometimes I heard that so many of my friends are actually Bulan masa sahur tu minum 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 takut ni minum minum bawa betul lepas tu kencing <laughs> it's okay it's normal it's okay ah uh, uh. stress lepas tu eh, cukup ke cukup ke <coughs> so I think that maybe you don't have to hoard everything you know the liquid tu masa masa sahur tu lah minum 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 that's why you can macam relax and chill throughout the the day that you can drink always start begin something with a cup of water and end something with a cup of water sebelum solat satu uh, sebelum solat maghrib satu cup uh, habis solat maghrib satu cup uh, macam itulah I punya rutin <laughs> so in my head okay actually I dah cukup dah tulis so, terus walaupun solat apa walaupun bulan puasa ah gitu lagi tips <laughs> alright so thank you once again ah uh, semua dah cakap thank you nice topic so yeah. once again thank you so much uh, Dr Shazli we hope to see uh, you again volume five insyaallah Can I, can I add a few more things boleh, before? Boleh. Because, ah, memang boleh. Kita tak memang nak suruh doktor leng- kat ni. Ah, macam tak lengkap lah asyik. Because uh, I think I also forgot to mention that infection of the urinary tract pun can lead to stones as well. Okay, mm-hmm. but before kan kita, kita tak hari kecil tu, infection pun can cause uh, you know, stones ya. Yeah? I think we, we I just want to touch just a bit on the treatment. Ah, treatment. Uh, boleh, boleh, the, boleh. Okay, so uh, treatment ni, kita like I mentioned before, uh, there's something called extracorporeal uh, shockwave lithotripsy. Maksudnya, uh, kita ada a special uh, ultrasound device yang menembak high frequency sound waves yang boleh menembusi kita punya kulit but when it reaches the batu, dia cuba pecahkan. Meraikan, right. Ah, uh, So there's no surgery, potong ke, tak ada apa. Oh. Just a tembak-tembak uh, from like an X-ray punya device tu, it shoots a sound wave. Huh? So we call that ESWL. But it's only limited to a size of 0.5 to 1.2 centimeter punya batu. But if it's bigger, we need to do something called percutaneous nephrolithotripsy or to lithotomy where dia kena tebuk dekat belakang ni. Right. The camera dia masuk and then sama ada dia ada alat tu untuk uh, use a drill 
to drill and pecahkan the batu or they have to make a bigger opening and try to remove the batu as a whole lah. And then the last one that I mentioned about saw tu, they have to cut and remove the batu. Uh, so best to detect it early yang dia, dia size 1 or 1.2 cm di mana doktor hanya guna alat penembak tu saja. If you right. see alat tu kan dia macam uh, dia macam dekat itu Star Wars uh, Millennium Falcon no? the movie Star Wars tu kan dia <laughs> dia ada dia ada target tu eh nampak batu target kat batu tu tembak cut 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 ah then dia the pressure hanya sepanas je dia feel right. dalam tu dia pecah okay so uh, this is a treatment lah if, if, if people are wondering how they treat batu karang in hospitals under urology department lah otherwise yeah. but again lah to echo what uh, Nina has said again <coughs> water you can create your own schedule you know like one glass before one glass after and then again if you are dieting during bulan puasa water before you eat makes you feel more full and satiated mm. ah, sebelum kita makan kalau tidak kita minum air sikit lepas tu lantak makan tu you you mm. so, but when you drink the water you kenyang air you makan sikit so sikit. you can get that weight loss that you want during fasting month lah otherwise ah. but create a proper Uh, schedule for water, drinking water, and then coffee or tea too. Just once a day should be adequate. Otherwise, ah, uh, maybe in the morning lah. Uh, if sahur, sahur too, I kosong. But during normal days, in the morning, coffee too kicks your kicks like yeah. Uh, but after that, uh, uh, water will be adequate. Otherwise, ah. Uh. Right. So again, thank you so much for having me. Selamat nyambut bulan puasa dan Ramadan. Selamat berpuasa terus orang. Okay, and then uh, I'm looking forward to our next topic. I'm so curious to know what is the next one. So, <laughs> me too. Uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that as well. And thank you so much for having me again. Lah. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. And thank you so much once again, all the viewers. So, inshallah, ada umur panjang. Kita akan jumpa lagi volume number five, inshallah. My name is Nani Roslan. And thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye.